Welcome back, everybody, to a little less fear podcast. I would like to introduce Susie Hayes. Susie Hayes helps people become freed from stuck. I would love to be freed from stuck by showing them how to access internal resources they never knew they had to create what they never knew they could, combining coaching, counseling, and hypnosis. I love hypnosis, by the way. She is also a speaker, teacher, and award-winning author of the book, Freed from Stuck. Dare to cross the bridge beyond grief, trauma, and self-sabotage to discover lasting change now. Yes, Susie Hayes, welcome to A Little Less Fear podcast. Thank you so much. It is an honor to be here. I'm looking forward to this conversation. Absolutely. Me too, Susie. Thank you so much. So tell us, how did your journey begin? I'm always curious in the beginning, before we get to the book and, and the classes that you offer, what got you into this specific journey that you're on now? It was interesting because I had um, actually run into a colleague of mine at a professional gathering who had just started a publishing company. And um, he said, uh, have you ever thought about writing a book? And I said, absolutely not. I, I don't have any interest in doing that. And he said, I bet you there's a book in you. And I said, nope, no book in me. And I, I had seen so many people be tortured by that process. And I just didn't have the wherewithal to do that. So he said, give me an hour and a half and I'll find that book in you. And I said, wow. I'll give you an hour and a half. So we sat down and had a conversation and he uh, was a really excellent interviewer and asked some great questions. And what came out of that is that I realized that actually for the last almost four decades, uh, in all of the arenas in which I was serving, what I was really doing was helping people become freed from stuck. So I said, okay, let's write a book about being freed from stuck. And that's how I really came into authoring that book. And during the process, we put together the acronym of F-R-E-E-D, which is actually um, stands for the five elements or the five steps of becoming freed from stuck. Oh, I love it. I love it. And so what can I ask what that acronym is or should? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. It's F-R-E-E-D, freed. So it's we use the metaphor of a, a bridge going from stuck to freed from stuck. And so the five steps across the bridge, the first one, F, is to face the bridge, which is about identifying what the real problem is. And you certainly know in your work, as I do, that very often what is presented as the problem is not the real problem. <laughs> right. Right? Totally. So underneath often what appears to be an experience is actually an emotional state that has to do with some experience of pain or some need that is not being attended to. So to be able to identify what is being expressed in the stuckness, if you will, is really important so that you know how to actually address what is needed. So that's the first step. The second element is the R, which is to recognize the bridge which is about looking across the bridge to the destination. And part of this piece that is so important is that the more clearly we have a vision of where we want to be, how we believe our life will be different when we get there, and the more emotionally charged it is, the more it fuels us to make that crossing of the bridge because the crossing of the bridge is a process. And so the more that we can do to support that, the easier it is in that transition of change. The third element is E, embrace the bridge. This is about identifying any sort of blocks or challenges that may be there for us that has kept us from living the quality of life that we want. And also then putting together a plan, a strategy, a process of getting from stuck to freed from stuck. The next E is exit the bridge. And this is the element that we sometimes 
very often don't talk about in the change process. And that is grieving. Because anytime we make a change, we must let go of something. And whenever we let go of something, we experience loss. And grieving, as you know, is the most difficult task for us as human beings. Absolutely. And to the degree that we love or to the degree that we are attached is the degree of our grief. But we must do that in order to fully be able to make it across the bridge because otherwise we will get stuck in that um, element, in that step and not really be able to move or we will um, retreat backwards. We fall backwards if we don't really attend. And then get into that same cycle. When it... Yes, absolutely. And then D is arriving at the destination and at arriving at the destination, it is also about discovering our destiny. And by that, I mean, in any process of change, the transformation happens for us, hopefully at a level that we become more clear about who we are, what our values are, what our purpose is, that it is an expansive process of change. And so not only do we achieve our goal or change the habit or develop some new aspect of our life, but hopefully, and if it's true change, we will also have a deeper transformation that has to do with that self-discovery. And it's also important that at that point, we recognize a couple of things. One is that there will be another there will be another bridge to cross. There yes, will be Lord. another place where we will be stuck to become freed from stuck. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's also important that we have some system of accountability. And by that, I mean not policing, but support and those around us who will encourage us to move forward in our life and to build upon the changes that we've made. Susie, I'm curious how you came up with Freed because as you were explaining and describing everything, I was thinking about, I have my doctorate in, in psychology and I remember taking a lot of classes on hypnosis. Yes. So, and I saw that you have, you, you, you used to hypnotize people, correct? Yes. So that's exactly what I was thinking actually right now, as you were describing the process, I remember some of the classes, even though it's been 15 years ago, but I remember that some of them have similar steps. Did you come up with this acronym yourself? I did not. It was actually my publisher that oh, came wow. up with it. Yeah. Um, he, he called me one day and he said, Susie, I've got this great idea. And I said, what is it? He goes, I think we should use the F-R-E-E-D. And I said, what are you talking about? And he said, well, we're talking about a bridge. And so <laughs> what are you talking about? and it was like, wow, that is just genius. So yeah, yeah. yeah I must give him the credit for that. But along, but as far as like actually breaking down on how to make it all work, it's, it kind of flows at like a, a hypnosis in a way, but then you took it more like out of into a manifestation type stream. Yes, that's true. That hypnosis really does have those elements. Yes. Um, in terms of what needs to be released and the vision of moving forward right. and the process of guiding the unconscious mind to let go of the resistances and the fear. So you're absolutely right in that. And um, and then of course, you know, in hypnosis, it's, it's not magic. Sometimes people think that it is, it's very powerful, right. but it is also something that needs to be reinforced and built upon. It does because a lot of stuff comes up, a lot of unexpected stuff. It can, yes. That's why we store it in the unconscious. <laughs> so what kinds of things are being freed from people? Oh my gosh. You know, I would say that probably some of the elements, some of the life experiences where people become most stuck are in areas of trauma or loss. Also, um, self-sabotage, where they are in some kind of pattern that is not serving them, but they continue to repeat it and are at a loss as to how to take change that and then I think one element where people often get stuck is also procrastination that they um, put off and put off and put off even though they want to make a change but they 
they resist taking the action that they need to. Do you find that Freed also helps people with addiction? Yes, I think that that it is um, it's basically the same elements are part of the journey of recovery. Right. That, um, and I that, mean all types of addiction from drugs to food to sex. I mean, I could just I just while you're talking, I'm, my mind is just going and I can see how this can help addicts. Yes, absolutely. And there is, of course, then the added challenge when there is that kind of stuckness that has a strong biochemical uh, component. And that's a whole nother piece that makes it challenging for addictions. Mm -hmm. What do you find the most rewarding from freeing people from being stuck? Do you at all feel stuck with them and then you become free when they become free? Or are you able to completely separate yourself from that and see it all as a separate visualization? Um, when I was in graduate school of completing my, uh, my master's degree in counseling, I had a professor who once said, when people come to you, they are struggling and sometimes feel like they're in this deep pit or well. And he said, the last thing that you want to do to help them is to jump into the well with them. So the task is to reach down into the well, to extend to them hope and insight and encouragement, and to help them come out of that well, but you cannot do any good service for them if you jump into the well with them. So um, I really took that to heart very early on, and um, I've been in in private practice since 1982. Oh, wow. And so I've been doing this for a little while and I it, that has served me well, that wisdom, because oh, yes. our task is to come alongside of people right, and to be empathetic and to support them in the journey and to give them honest reflection and insight. But if we become entangled in their their story or their journey we don't have the perspective and we don't exactly. have what we need to really be able to help them move out of that what is the best freed from stuck story that you can share with us oh wow um well i i think of um one woman that I was working with, I was actually working with her and her um, boyfriend at the time, and then he um, dropped out of the process. And it's, it's, a, it's a, what I would say a very common challenge. And that is that she had come to realize that she needed to exit the relationship. She knew that but it was a relationship of golden handcuffs. He was very wealthy and she um, had become dependent on him in that way. And she really struggled with going out on her own again and becoming independent. So it was really scary for her. So she was stuck in this relationship. She knew she had to get out of it eventually. She couldn't stay. The pain was too great. And he had been unfaithful to her. And uh, it was, you know, she, it, he was not suited for her. And so I, I observed her and, and maybe you have seen this as well. I see this often with women, particularly, and I call it the egg timer uh, event, where they will go I've along. Heard of that. It, it's my own term. It's just okay. what I observe. Uh, that they they'll be in a situation and um, I will often see this in couples therapy and the timer will go tick 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 ding and when it hits ding they're done <laughs> they are done and it doesn't matter how much therapy they do it doesn't matter how sweet talking he is they're done 
And she needed to get, she needed a moment, you know, she had to come to this point of saying, I'm done. Mm -hmm. And I have only, in all the years, I've only seen one woman who got to that point, who worked her way back and, and fortunately is now still um, happily married to the man because he wow. did he did the work he did oh, the work he needed wow, to so excellent. yes I mean we love the those stories yes we love those those experiences because sometimes we see that people have to um, experience those losses and disappointments so she went on and now she, uh, she went on to become a divorce coach what? she's also very successful wow. in real estate and mortgages uh, she has raised her kids now into being uh, successful adults. Financially, she's doing very well and her life is thriving. So that is, um, that's what can happen when people are willing to, to do the work mm -hmm. of moving where they know they belong. That's a beautiful story. I love it. <laughs> yeah, you literally you. freed her from being stuck. Yes. So what's well, the she, biggest... she freed herself. Yeah. You know, she had to, she had to figure right. that out. Yeah. 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 But I, I helped her along the way. Susie, what's one of the biggest challenges with trying to free or helping people free, getting free from stuff? What's one of the biggest challenges that you have faced before? Mm. You know, I, I, I remember um, a very sad moment where a couple had come in to see me and she had brought him in and said, you know, we've got to do this or we're not going to make it. And I remember that he sat in the chair and his body was slumped over and his head was down and he sat through the session like that. Didn't oh, wow. say a word, wouldn't respond you know, would maybe mumble an answer or whatever. And I remember looking at the anguish on her face. And I finally said, I need to be honest with you. I can't work with you wow. because you have no desire right. to heal this relationship. And I wish that you did. Your wife wants this for you, but I... I see no indication at all that you were wanting anything to be different in your relationship. Wow. And he shrugged his shoulders, got up out of the chair and walked out of the room. And she looked at me with tears in her eyes. And she said, I was afraid this would happen. And of course, I don't know what happened to them. I suspect that probably the relationship was dissolved, mm -hmm. but that was one of the most blatant times of resisting change and healing that I have yeah. ever experienced. Most people, if they're really not wanting to be there, or they're resisting the process, they're a little bit more um, polite about it. But that was very, the message was very clear that he yeah. simply was not ready. And so he stayed in the stuckness and the consequences resulted from that. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's an incredible story. And I can I can see it all. I can see it and I can feel it. How do you how do you when you get home? I'm assuming you're are you not working from home or do you work from home? I do work from na home now since COVID. Because awesome. You know, the office I paid for rent for a year while yeah. I was doing my work on Zoom. Wow. And afterwards I went, when the lease came up, I said, you know, I I don't think I need to to do that. So I, I am now working out of my home. And um, the artwork behind me is from my office. Beautiful. But, uh, I love it. I, thank you. Thank you. But um, yeah, I, I work from home now. Awesome. So my question is, how do you unwind from such heaviness that can occur in being this type of counselor and freeing people from being stuck? I understand the whole wishing well story that you, that you explained earlier. And I, I remember that in training as well. You're not supposed to go in there with them and kind of stay in the third person. That way you also don't put in you're, you're not so biased but how do you actually free your own self from that energy once you're done doing an interview like that or talking to someone like that or 
going through trying to free someone from being stuck because I can imagine after time after time after time it can become a little heavy sometimes it's a lot of energy on your behalf mental physical emotionally spiritually yes absolutely if if you are fully showing up and being present with someone, yes and if they are in deep pain or fear yeah. or oh, trauma, yeah. right. there is an intensity in their experience that needs to be honored and right. reflected and appreciated. Uh -huh. And I don't know exactly how to explain how I manage that other than I do not get entangled in that. I uh, and it's not like I have to hold people at arm's length. It's not that. It's mm. that I think I just really understand That's that I need to be present with them from a different place in myself. Mm -hmm. And when I'm present with them from a place of hope and clarity mm -hmm. and insight and compassion then oh, it yeah. allows it allows them to to own their own experience right and so um when i am done at the end of my day when i've closed out my notes and i've turned off the lights yeah. um i move into my personal life and uh, probably like yourself i'm on call so if there's an emergency but apart from that if i am there with them in that moment um, that is my commitment to them. And I trust that, that we will figure out how to move forward with whatever is going on in their lives in, uh, we'll figure out how to move forward in the work and that I will know that when I'm present with them again. So I don't find it depleting other than how it is for us sometimes when we've worked a long day and we're just weary from lots of hours, you know, right. and that's different. That's a different kind of weariness, but it's not, um, I don't find that the work itself is depleting for me. If, if it was, I wouldn't still be doing it with such passion. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love passion. And so your book, yes. so you had someone say, you got to write a book. You said you didn't have it in you, but you obviously had it in you. And how did you figure it out? You did have it in you. Well, it was from that initial interview. And then what we did, he had an interesting process. Um, we did three days of uh, a two hour interview for those wow. three consecutive days where he had prepared this massive amount of questions mm -hmm. for me. And basically it was just like this, um, it was kind of like an unconscious download he would ask me a question and I would just answer it. And he took all of that material from those questions and that conversation, six hours of material, and he organized it for me and put it together and structured it the way um, it is. And so it was very fluid. And um, I mean, sometimes I go back and I, I read it and I go, wow, that's really good. And, um, pardon me. Okay. I apologize. Sure. You'll have to edit this out. This is... That's my alarm for 15 minutes preparation for our video. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. No <laughs> could, it went off and I had my phone turned off, but the alarm was still turned on. I apologize. Sure. Okay, where were we? I was talking about the unconscious download. Yes. So sometimes I actually will go back and read portions of my book for whatever reason. And I will, boy, that's pretty good stuff. <laughs> stuff. I don't even remember saying that. Because <laughs> So yeah, that's how we put it together. And um, yeah, it was it was a really interesting process. How long did it take you to put it all together? 
I believe that uh, overall it was about three months. Um, the 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 putting it together, he did that heavy lifting originally, but then it was editing and editing and editing. Oh, yeah. So and um, yeah, right. So uh, and the um, and we we spent a, a massive amount of time on the book cover. Because oh, wow. we wanted to get the message uh, across. And we had this metaphor of the bridge. And finally, uh, the lights came on when he said, well, you know, we want people to be focused on the destination of where they're going to be going. So we picked out this picture um, that is uh, about a woman crossing a bridge toward the destination. Oh, I and love when, that. When I saw the picture, I went, oh, that's it. That's, that's it. The, that's the message that we want. So yeah, but it took us a while to get there. What an awesome interview you are. You're beautiful. You're charming. You've got a glow to you that's just unlike any other. Thanks so much for being on the Little Less Fear podcast. How can our viewers, our watchers, and our listeners find you? They can find and your me book. and my book. Well, they can find my book on Amazon, of course. And they can find me uh, most easily on my website, okay. which is freedfromstuck.com. There's lots of resources on there, articles, blogs, um, just all kinds of information on different topics. And if anyone is interested in considering doing some work together, they can go there and sign up for an initial consultation at, with no charge, no um um a commitment there but it would be a time for us to get acquainted and see if that would make sense but everything's there right at the right at the website awesome Susie! thanks so much for being on my podcast you're awesome thanks for sharing your love light and all of your energy and let's definitely keep in touch absolutely thank you again so much oh you're welcome it was my pleasure thanks so much Susie. you bet <laughs>